Hey guys, we are back out here at the 1999 free Elkhorn. And I'm going to show you some things that I've done here, and you're going to probably appreciate them. One of the top things is this. Now, if you have an RV sets over the wintertime, you want to test it for frozen lines before you fill it full of water and learn the hard way. This is your easiest thing. Now, as usual, below the video, I'll put a link to everything in there that you could use to do these things, and including parts and like that right in there. I'll show you more of that. Um, one of the things that you do, now this has got a check valve that keeps the water from coming out when your pump, which there's my pump back there, um, when it kicks on, it keeps the water from flowing out. So it has a spring-loaded check valve, but it allow you to shove air in with something like this, and then it don't come out. See, I can open this valve all the way. There's no air coming out. Now, it don't really matter, but I can take this, and you notice that tapered edge on it, and I can put it in what I'm using is a 3 8 gas fitting by half-inch IPS, iron pipe, and I'm putting it in there, and then, of course, you see how that fits? I will hold that valve there, of course, and I will hit it with air. Now, I've set my compressor at 65 PSI because I wanted to really test this. That water heater is an older water heater. Even though it hasn't hardly been used, it's still an older water heater. You never know. So what we've got here is we have, uh, we have the ability to test your system and at the same time verify whether or not you've got leaks a split in the pipe or anything else and if you just want to set your compressor for 25 psi you can do that instead of making a big mess adding water to your system now a lot of this has the old pet pipe and stuff like that and the gray pipe and it's treacherous stuff the old quest i'm sorry it's quest pipe polybutyl quest now you can come over here and you can listen now, pardon my hands are dirty been working all day but listen that's air because that's what's in the system. This has been pressured up a day and a half, almost two days. So coming over here, we've got carpet, commercial grade with pad, going in to this because these are not well insulated and that's gonna aid in keeping it cooler or warmer. The other thing we're working is a generator. Now, this generator's got about 45 to 50 hours on it and not one single problem. It's only 2,000 watt. But man, does it ever run forever on a tank of gas. We run our dredging equipment for gold panning. We run that and use it, and it's just it's freaking awesome. The other thing is, is we've got the battery boxes. There's one for a 31 series here. And then over here, we have the regular propane for a horizontal tank. And this I added. Now, this is the reason I love salvaging old RVs. One, I come up and got a nice one of these doors here, or, or hatches, and this. Now, there was a piece of paneling that covered this big, huge hole. You look, you're seeing inside the RV, and all of this space. It's just an amazing amount of space, nearly three feet of space that is 17 inches wide, 19 inches tall, and 30, I think it's 32 inches deep, 34 inches, 34 inches deep to the back of that cabinet. And it was just covered by a sheet of paneling. That was it. It was all hollow, totally hollow, and not insulated. So, of course, we're going in there and insulating it, too. So, one of the things that I have done is, oh, let me get over here, is I have put in, and I'll put a link for it, too, an electric. Now, we all know that these are not rigged up for a lot of power. You can't. Uh, safely try to run a thousand watt element on most of these RVs and that's what they sell but this one's a little different and it goes in your drain you see right there it goes into your drain and it is just a compression fitting on that heating element and then it has fireproof silicone wire and of course I put the loom on it but you could put anything you can just wrap it with electrical tape and make sure it's prevented from touching anything um, and it'll run inside and I'll show you that in there but you can hear the water heater here. This is the this is your total pressure valve. You hear that? So it's good, seals well. Everything else was in great shape, and it's 65 psi. Um, 
I'm guaranteeing I don't have a leak at this point because of that test. Now, all this other you can see that we've done to it, all the windows, all the new hatches, all the sides have that, those little lights on them, all new LEDs all the way around. So, and there's one of those lights there. And this nice feature on the air conditioner, you see that? Now you can buy this, this is aluminum, and I want to use aluminum instead of steel because it, it will allow that to cool. Don't use steel of uh, expanded metal on your air conditioners. It'll cause the heat to concentrate and it won't be able to empty the heat out. Use aluminum so that it sinks out, heat sinks out. And Daniel's in here working on putting this outdoor carpet on the bed space, including softening the edge because that thing would hurt your knees. Um, in here, we have the sink and once again, air pressure. That was the reason for it, both sides, hot and cold. Um, so I'm sure I'm under 65 PSI now, but it guaranteed I had no leaks. Up inside on the water heater is one of these. Now, you have to make sure you get the mounting hardware for these, and I'll try to make sure I get a link for the exact one that you can use a strap. So you'll remove, if you have a foam model, you'll remove your clamshell off of that, because you got to pull this out. You'll remove that, and then you'll basically do what I've done here. You see that sitting in there? And that's not wired yet. I'm in the process of finishing that and the other wires. Pardon this big tangled mess of garbage is those little blue one little caps marked black and white for because they, they are polarized and you just get your adapters for those it's really simple to do now next step for us is getting the stove put back in there's its gas line we plugged it off uh, yesterday to fire everything up in here to make sure i had no leaks before we put the stove back make sure i didn't drive a nail or a staple through something um, we have wiring that's ran in different spots up in here. One of the things I want to give y'all guys a tip on is that. Now, that's a nice little microwave. It's about two years old, but I want to give you a little tip. Now, this one here, it's door latch like they normally do, don't catch right. But, and we're at, what, 738 p.m. Um, you go to a college, doesn't matter what kind, at the end of the year, these college kids will dump these by the dozens and one year i picked up 36 microwaves of different styles and about eight little small dorm refrigerators boy i had a hell of a day on craigslist now back in here we have the toilet finished we have all the pex lines in and we have standard faucet supply that we're going to use for drain down that's going to be for the drain down purpose of the rv and i've got two holes made for that so and there's all that wiring ran. You see up in there to those lights. Not a bad scenario. The heater did fire up great. Got extremely hot in here. Um, and shut off correctly. There's his thermostat. But what do you guys think? Not too bad. We still got a little clean in here and there to do, but not too bad. This is looking good. We have an air bed to reduce weight because I've added some. And I'll be adding more because of that. And this is where that this is where that stupid panel was. There was a panel that blocked this off. Look at all the space, total space. Another thing is is over here where Daniel's at is that we had this little crappy thing here. And I'm going to tell you right now, if, if you're foolish if you don't go get this. The best place I find these at is Walmart. I'm not a Walmart fan, but I'll buy from Walmart on this occasion these are the best priced and this is a all service chemicals you name it oil fires uh, plastics this thing is beats the hell out of that thing right there and it comes with the mounting bracket and all now this one now we're ripping out the the bad parts of this the floor is in great shape but doesn't look like it now but we're ripping out that and redoing the table and all that but this thing is what came with the rv so it's 20 years old. Yes, it's still pressured. So it's still good. Um, we'll just leave it in my shop. And down here, let me get back here. Down here, 
is where it was mounted. So it was literally just mounted in a little small cutout about three inches wide. Look what I made. Yeah, pardon my little black mark there, kind of marked the top of the door. But look what I made. Just old scrap RV door with a different knob. But look at the space in there. Not too bad. So now we have, uh, plus now we have access when we never did to the breaker for the battery box. And we're going to be upgrading that from six gauge because that's just six gauge to four gauge for the use of an inverter in here. The other thing is, is that I'm going to show you a video on why you see that hot spot. Don't be surprised if you don't have a hot spot like this under your power converter. And the reason is simple. They have a little fan in them. The fan has a thermal bimetal disc. The bimetal disc will often fail. Same thing you have in a microwave. Now, they will fail. And when they do, that transformer will get smoking hot. Look at that. And if you know my videos, I talked about working on this a few times. Well, it didn't come out well. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a regulated power supply. They're only about $23, $24, 30 amps. We're going to put that in here. And then, of course, for the battery system, we're going to put a standard automatic 8 amp battery charger. By the time I'm done, I'm going to spend 50 bucks, or I could buy this whole thing here for almost 200 And I'm going to have smoother power. No hum, no buzz, no nothing. And we're going to show you that. So be looking for a video coming out on that adaption. And you'll see I've added all new 6-gauge wire here to be able to hook up to that system and run my 12-volt again because right now my 12-volt is off that fire hazard was removed but there you go guys that little device up in there um pretty simple setup not hard to do and the uh i mean it's instructions is easy you'll follow them they're very easy to do you look up in here still full under pressure all the other stuff in here is working great we're using the power there which i'm going to later on put a flatter plug for that microwave so it's not hanging in front of my window but did it come out good is it coming out good let's put it that way the seat that the, the uh, furniture and the carpet come close to each other pretty good find for 50 cents a piece commercial grade and Daniel is working on getting it all and look made in the USA all right now y'all stay tuned we're gonna be doing a video on how I'm going to use this 14 gauge fence or signpost metal. It's actually te technically signpost metal. Um, you see it, holds up stop signs. You can get it at your local fence companies. A lot of fence companies or road construction companies go by there, they'll have a piece that might have a bend at the end. You can get it like I did, this whole piece plus another four feet I cut off for a dollar. Scrap price, no kidding. Y'all look forward to more. Y'all learn something about that water system. It's easy to deal with. Make sure you test everything. Check your valves. Listen for leaks. You can make up some soapy water if you hear one. And find your leak before it ruins your RV. All right, guys, y'all be good.